Hi, good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to, for joining our Facebook Live session in this lovely Saturday. Before we proceed, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Rachel from Bagan Specialist Center Marketing Teams, and I will be your host for today's program. Today, I am glad to invite Ms. Gui Carvin of Bagan Specialist Center to give us a sharing on this afternoon. In this hour, Ms. Greg Haven will share uh, topics of sensory brain activities at home. And Ms. Kok Haven is our occupational therapist at Bagan Specialty Center. If you have any question to ask our occupation therapist, please feel free to ra raise the question in Facebook post column to kick off the program. Please allow me to welcome Ms. Kok Haven over to you, Ms. Okay. Gwekavan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rachel, for the introduction. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Uh, my name is Gwe Gawen, and I'm an occupational therapist here in Bagan Specialist Center. So today, I'll be giving a talk on the sensory play activities that you can do at home. So as we all know, our country is now in the recovery phase of the movement control order. And uh, you can, with this phase, it also brings uh, schools are reopening and you can see cars are back on the streets. And also, uh, we are also returning to our normal daily living activities. But with, even though with the lockdown easing, we should still practice social distancing. And together with that, we should also adhere to the new norms of life. And that includes wearing masks when you go out, uh, frequent hand washing, practice of hand hygiene, social distancing. So with that, uh, our children are also experiencing this new norm of life in which they are incapable of going out to crowded places that often, you know, it is not advisable for them to go to crowded playgrounds or entertainment parks, whereby it's slightly more, more harder for them to carry out those activities without uh, knowing whether the environment is clean or not. But actually, with some creativity, we can actually do these activities, uh, which includes play activities that will help to enhance our skills and of course, we involve our senses and we can do it at home, okay? So prior to me starting uh, on the sharing of sensory play, I would like to introduce about myself and my profession. So basically, as an occupational therapist, I help people to participate in the things that they want or need to do through the therapeutic use of uh, everyday activities, and we call it occupations. So for adults, it can be any daily activities of, you know, uh, washing your hands, having your lunch, and also, uh, of course, your formal uh, occupation as well. For children, we help uh, children to gain independence while also strengthening the development of skills that the children need to function and socialize. So for children, uh, of course, we know most important things for them in uh, daily living is for them to learn how to play and, of course, to learn about the school skills which will prepare them to be able to write and also read as well. So some of the skills that we focus in occupational therapy includes uh, we improve school performance, we help children to carry out daily living activities, we develop the fine motor skills that are needed for handwriting and also uh, for carrying out uh, daily tasks such as learning how to button the shirt. Okay. And so now we go into our main topic, which is sensory play. So we know that children and even adults learn best and retains most information when they engage their senses. Many of our fondest memories are associated with one or more senses. So for example, if I were to ask you to imagine, you know, if you like to go to the beach and without taking you to the beach, I'd like to you to imagine it. You can actually feel, uh, imagine how the sand feels in between your toes. You can hear uh, the sound of uh, waves lapping against the shore even without going there. And why is that so? That's because you remembered it based on your senses, okay? Uh, so from birth to early childhood, children use their senses to explore and try to make sense of the world around them. So they do this by touching, you know, uh, trying, uh, tasting things, uh, smelling, and also moving, and also hearing things. So for very young children, you'll see young children will pick up things and they'll put it in their mouths because that's how they explore the environment through the uh, oral sensation, okay? So for here, we will talk about the five commonly known senses, which is taste. Taste is uh, based on the stimulation that comes to the taste receptors on your tongue. We have smell, which is uh, the stimulation of chemical receptors in your upper airway, which is your nose. We have sight, which is what you see. 
hearing, uh, the reception of sound via our inner ear, and also, uh, uh, and also we are touching on two less known senses, and these are the, the ones that we commonly miss, require vestibular and proprioception. For vestibular, it is also, you can also call it a balance. So it is a stimulation of vestibular system in our inner ear to tell us our body position in relation to gravity, balance as well as spatial orientation. So for vesti uh, for pro proprioception, it is also known as body awareness. This is how our brain receives stimulation from our joints, which is our joints, different body joints, as well as our muscles uh, to enable us to gain a sense of where our bodies are in space. So a simpler way to imagine vestibular and proprioception is that if, for example, I were to ask you to close your eyes and ask you to put your hand in the, and, and I were to put your hand in a fisted position without opening your eyes, you're actually capable of, uh, you know, telling me that your hand is in a fisted position. So this is what we call a proprioception senses. Okay. Okay. So what is sensory play? Sensory play, it includes any activities that stimulates your child's senses, which are the five plus two senses that we talked about in the earlier slides. Okay, So when you think of sensory play, you immediately picture children playing with sand and water. While this is not the only way that you can uh, explore your senses, we know just how much children enjoy playing with this kind of activity. So for example, uh, if let's say the there is a child with an issue of uh, sensory issues, for example, the child is trying to play with a peer, but the child is constantly being distracted by the things that are going on in the environment, as well as the, the, there are noises that is affecting the child, such that the child is constantly turning to look around and also trying to uh, look at what is uh, making that noise. Okay, So with sensory play, you actually allow the child to explore the sensor, senses using the hearing then the child will learn to adapt to the feeling and also learn how to block out unnecessary uh, noises in the surroundings. So as a result, the child is able to tolerate play playing activity uh, and also be able to focus in the task better. Okay. Another good example is that for children who are picky eaters, you know, who are very fussy with uh, eating, uh, they're very selective with food. So if let's say a child has a uh, uh, very is very averted to trying spaghetti. Let's say that for example, okay. So we can use sensory play to allow the child to feel how spaghetti feels like. Let the child pull at it, feel how it feels like uh, in her hands and uh, in a safe environment without much expectation. Meaning we are not uh, trying to force the child to eat the thing or try the food. They are just we are just letting the child feels how it feels like in your fingers or so. So as the child develops trust and understanding of this texture, it will help to build the positive pathways in the brain and say, you know, it is safe to engage with this food. And so they will be more um, okay to try out different foods. Okay. Right. So there are research that shows that sensory uh, play helps to build the nerve connections in the brain pathways, which, which leads to the child's ability to complete more complex tasks, uh, which includes learning, you know, problem solving as well. So many of our senses will develop optimally uh, during a window of time called the critical period. And most of these crit critical periods are found to exist during the early years uh, after birth. So this is why sensory play is especially important for uh, very young children. So when your child is uh, allowed to use multiple senses to accomplish a task, they will be able to learn more from the experience as well as uh, retain more information from the experience. This doesn't change as we grow. It's not like this is only uh, applicable for very young children because even as we get older, adults also tend to retain more information when uh, multiple senses are engaged. And also another extra benefit is that children will actually become more creative simply by playing. So while they are playing, uh, playing using their senses, this will also help to build their linguistic, cognitive, visual, spatial, emotional, and uh, social skills as well. Okay. okay. So here, I'm going to show you a video. Let's look at these very cute babies. Okay, so you can see they are very scared of, uh, because of lack of exposure, they are very scared of uh, coming in contact with uh, surfaces that are unfamiliar to them. So you can see they are trying very hard to avoid those surfaces. Okay. So 
so this um from this uh, video we can see that uh, this is not saying that all these babies have sensory processing issues you see uh, basically when we are exposed to the sensors and we are allowed to explore the sensors we will have a reduction of aversion to those sensors so for example uh, because of our environment these days you know we don't go to uh, parks as often we don't go to beaches as often so we we, we are not accommodated to all these different kinds of uh, sensors so for babies you know it's their first time doing it and they are not used to it so if you imagine let's say they are not given this opportunity to explore these different sensors uh, for the period of that lifetime as they grow up because they remember how not how uncomfortable it feels you know grass feels again their skins so they'll become very averted to doing sports activities you know say trying to run on grass or you know run on beaches so as a result this will also affect their physical functions as well okay um so of course we will hear that uh people will say um how is uh how is this uh, move, uh, how are these all these movements sensory uh, play going to help my children to learn how to read or uh, you know how can this possibly help my children to listen to their teacher well the sad truth is that if a child is unable to uh, achieve full development which is a uh, we if we don't ensure that they're, they're developmentally ready they will never be able to proceed to learning or reading efficiently okay so of course uh, in order to let them be prepared to learn things, they will have to learn how to explore and you know achieve the developmental milestone of understanding the senses around them. Okay, so the simplest way to help children to engage their senses is actually by playing outside, uh, you know, in the nature where there, it is full of colors, movements, textures, different sounds. But due to our current condition, you know, we are trying to limit outdoor times as well. So here I will be giving you some examples of activities that you can actually carry out at home in the safe environment or maybe in your neighborhood areas as well. So for babies, infant, very young children, you can let them explore their senses by watching bubbles. If we blow bubbles, let them see how bubbles float and how it feels when the bubbles land on their skin as well as learning how to break the bubbles. And also you can let them take paper or different texture fabric to let them scrunch and uh, feel how it feels against their skin and also hear the noises it makes okay for slightly older children which are toddlers uh, age about three years old or so you can let them observe light and shadows created by torch light uh, meaning puppet shows so they can know how different things react differently and also they can always uh, do try to do finger paintings and during the process that they learn to see you know how colors mix and uh, patterns can be formed when you place things differently or so for preschool and school age children, they can learn how to create shapes and playing with sand. If let's say there is sand available in your location, if let's say no, you can always uh, make your own makeshift sand. I'll be teaching you in a while on that. No? Okay. Okay. So for this uh, section, we will be touching on sensory play activities that you can do at home. I'll be teaching four activities. Um, four main activities that you can home do at home and now uh, we will involve four types of sensors which is touch sight and also uh, proprioception the sensors of our joints as well as vestibular okay which is our balancing so for each of these uh, activities i've broken down our list to two sections the first section is called a sensory tub okay sensory tub is um, it's not necessarily that the activity must be carried out in the tub but um, basically, it is the activities that allow you to just explore a material of some sort without any purpose. So the other one is called sensory exploration while creating. So sensory exploration, uh, this, is kind, this is a kind of exploration that I really enjoy the most to let my children play. So this kind of activity is uh, whereby there is a certain purpose, a goal, where during the activity, the child will be able to explore the senses but at the end of the session, there will be some, uh, there will be a sense of achievement whereby certain uh, goals are hit. Okay, so for senses of uh, touch, okay, uh, for sensory touch, what we will ask you to do. So now I will be shifting my screen a little bit lower so you can see the activities that we will prepare. Okay. All right. So for sensory touch, what we will ask you to do is to prepare. You can do it in plastic containers. You can do it in a larger basin, or even if you have an inflatable pool that you use for swimming at home, you can also use that as well. 
Okay, so what you do is uh, you fill the tub with the different textured things. So for example, over here, I am preparing these are green peas, green beans, or you can use red beans, uh, you can use sand, you can use little pebbles, or you can even use rice, uncooked rice. Okay, so you prepare these little tubs, and for younger children, just let them explore, let them play with it, you know, to see how it feels like against their skin. Huh? Okay, let them play with it, feel how it feels like. So of course, other than green peas, we do advise you can also use pebbles. These are tiny little aquarium rocks, okay, which you can also get from home. Okay, let them feel how it feels like, you know, let them play with it, drop it down, okay. Of course, other than using hands, you can also put it on the floor and let them step on it as well, okay. So for, let's say, we are looking to explore senses of touch, uh, and we are looking to do it uh, in the mode of sensory exploration while creating. Okay, so meaning that this one, we have a purpose to it. Okay, so what you can do is you can get uh, some clay or plasticine or Play-Doh. I can even see that there are certain recipes that they teach online, which allows you to make your own Play-Doh using uh, flour and oil. Okay, so when you have this kind of uh, uh, clay or plasticine or so, you can have your child learn how to squeeze in it, okay? So as they squeeze, you can also teach them how to uh, roll it up, okay? So as they roll, we teach them to roll and put it into alphabets. And it can also be shapes as well, okay? So there is an end goal to it while they are exploring the senses of how this texture feels against their hands, how their hand is reacting to the pressure created by the party. It also allows them to have a sense of purpose. So the, at the end of the activity, you know, the child will be able to spell things as well. So now let's move on to the second sensory play activity whereby we use sight. Okay, so for the sensory type activity, we will recommend you to fill transparent containers with uh, transparent liquid or gel. Okay, so over here, you can see that I have a plastic bottle clear container, can be any kind of container, and you can either use clear liquid like me, I'm using water here, or you can use uh, gel, hair gel products, it's also fine. You can even use a plastic bag and put it in as long as you know the plastic bag is uh, non-porous. So from this bottle, okay, what we will do is we will prepare some lightweight materials. So there are some lightweight materials, like over here I have a Okay. So, for example, sorry for the minor disruption earlier. Let's get back to our sensory play. Okay. So, for example, like we, we are saying, this activity we are training, uh, trying to let children explore senses of uh, their eyes, which is how they see things. So you can prepare a clear container like this, okay? Put in clear liquid, and then you use some lightweight materials. For example, you can try dry pasta, or like me, I have cotton ball over here. Put it in, okay? Use different colored uh, cotton balls will be fine. Or over here, I have some hair bands, okay? These are the hair ties that we use to tie our hair. You can also put in some just some simple rubber bands as well, doesn't matter. So as long as this thing will be able to float at different density in the water, it will be fine already. So once you put in, you can shake it around. Okay. So for younger children, let's say the age of uh, zero to uh, two years old, you can just let them play with it. Let them swirl around the bottle and see how it feels like. And also let them see how when they tilt the bottle, the things actually float or sink. Okay. If let's say it is an uh, older kid, you can let the kid try to make sense of what the child is seeing. You can try to ask, what can you see in this bottle? Uh, can you tell me what are the colors of the cotton balls? Uh, is there, other than the yellow cotton ball, is there any other colored uh, cotton balls in it? Okay, so this is one of the activities that we can do based on site activity. Of course, uh, let's, say, let's say we are looking at sensory exploration while creating. What we will do is we will encourage the second type of activity whereby there is a purpose to doing this kind of activity. So now we will tell you how to do the uh, 
activity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So over here, I have a sensory. Remember the sensory tub that we have already prepared earlier, okay? Whereby we fill a container with some uh, different type of texture. It can be pebbles, it can be sand, it can be green peas like mine. I like to use green peas because it's very manageable, you know? If let's say anything were to spill, it's easy to clean up and they are not so costly as well, okay? So what you can do to improve uh, and also allow site exploration is that when you are using your sensory tub, add in different colored things, okay? So over here, you can see I've already placed in some colored cubes into my sensory tub here. So to train your children on their site exploration, you can ask them to, can you find the green cube for me? And if they can find it, take it out for you. Okay. So at the same time, they are exploring their sight senses. They're also learning how to, uh, you know, they're also stimulating, exploring their senses of touch as well. Okay. So this is another activity that you can carry out. Of course, you can also do it in different forms, such as using pebbles. So while you're using pebbles, you add in your colored cubes also can. Okay, so carry it around. Let them find where is the cube. Okay, find the cube for mommy. Take it up and show mommy. Okay, that's another activity that we can do. So next, for the third activity, this will be on proprioception. So as we have discussed earlier, proprioception is uh, how our joints, how we can feel and get a sense of our joints. The benefits of being uh, very good with your proprioception senses is that it will allow the child to understand the body position. Say the child is, like, is uh, leaning on the table when, he's, when he or she is learning. When the child is uh, learning and during learning activities, the child is writing and slowly the child is like slumping. Sometimes this is because they don't get enough of the uh, proprioception. You know, they don't understand why is their body doing the leaning. So with this, uh, with these kind of activities, uh, proprioception sensory play, we're actually encouraging them to be more aware of their body position. So what you can do at home is that you take ribbons, okay? Take ribbons, stick it to the uh, to the walls or to the to the floor, and have your child learn how to cross it. Stick as you can see in this photo over here. Okay, so uh, basically it's like a laser spy game whereby the child will have to cross. So while they are crossing, they understand which position should they put their hands, which position should they put their legs. Of course, you can also do a rope tagging. So while they are rope tagging, they have to understand where do they put their legs, how do they pull the rope so that it goes to their side as well. Okay, so now we are at the final activity already. This is uh, called vestibular. So as we have discussed earlier, vestibular involves knowing your body position. Okay, so one of the activities that you can do at home is that you can go online, Google for footprints, images of footprints, okay? And as you look for these old footprints, uh, print it out. You can have footprints, you can have handprints or anything also can, no issue. Okay, so once you have it, you print it out, cut it, and then paste it on the floor. Then you can have a different obstacle course for your child to carry out this activity. So over here, I'll be sharing and I'll show you how we do this activity. Over here, we do it in our department. We don't need any extra things that we have to purchase or so. But basically, what we use is our own equipment and tools. Okay, so as you can see, when the child is crossing the obstacle course, they will have to follow uh, the body position that is uh, mandated using uh, the different footprints and handprints. So in order to train on balance, sometimes parents will tell me, you know, I don't have balance being at home. I cannot do balancing activities at home. So what you can do, as I said earlier, take a piece of shoe string, uh, can be, uh, you know, any laces or any string or so, tape it to the ground. If you tape it to the ground, as you can see over here, okay, this part here, we are actually taping uh, a piece of rope to the ground. And if you if say you say, I don't have any shoelace lying around at home. So what you can do, uh, you just uh, take duct tape, colored duct tape, different colored duct tapes, tape it on the floor. And you know, you can even uh, curve it around and create different patterns that your child will have to learn how to balance yeah, him or herself when he is walking across it. Okay, so that is the four sensory play activities that we are sharing to you. And we hope that you can try to carry out at home. Okay. So now I will give you some tips of how to manage sensory play. So for me, 
the ticket to a stress-free sensory play are these three essentials. So you need a good surface. Okay, a good surface is spacious. Okay, there are nothing in the surrounding. Say if there's furnitures, we advise, you know, uh, that space is best not to put so many furnitures because in case it is messy also, you are able to clean up the space. So it will be even better if it's on your porch where you can hose it down after a messy play activity, it will be good as well. Okay, so good, uh, good surface is important. The second essential is plastic bins. Okay, have lots of these plastic containers or like I said, inflatable pools lying around because what you do is that you are limiting the area of uh, messiness. So uh, at the end of the session, you know, you can take the container, you pour it back, you can close it up. So it's easier to manage. And of course, you need the right clothes. Okay, right clothes is important because if you play those messy play activities or sensory play activities, and if your clothes get dirty, you have to make sure that the clothes is easily washable. And also you won't feel sad if in case it's a nice clothes and you can't get the stain off anymore. And also, uh, it is very important for you to make your expectations clear when you are engaging in sensory play with your children. So you have to set out some rules with them. For example, say if you have the surface, you're putting, say, a, a tablecloth on the floor for them to play the messy play activity. Uh, tell them, you know, keep, for example, say you are using green peas here. Uh, tell them uh, your green peas should stay inside the tablecloth. Okay, so that will make uh, cleanup much more easier. Okay. And also sometimes we know that uh, not all uh, sensory play activities has the le same level of attractiveness to children. Sometimes it's easy to get discouraged, you know, uh, when a play recipe doesn't yield the result that we want or the kids play for like a few moments and they don't want to play. Try to explore different kinds. If one type didn't work, try another type, no? Okay. And also if let's say your child is uh, very squeamish uh, about sensory play, say the child is not so, uh, if let's say sticky things like starch or uh, clay, the messy things makes your child uncomfortable, you can always start with uh, easier things to such as uh, stones or pebble, okay? And also you can also add a favorite toy, say like if the child likes dinosaur toys, you can always create your sensory tap and then throw in some dinosaurs so the child will be interested and also try to take up the dinosaur toy that he or she loves, okay? And also we must think ahead of the activity and be very prepared for cleanup. Sensory play can be messy, but of course with these rules and tips in place, it is usually more manageable. Okay, so now I am at my last part of the talk already. Okay, so as a conclusion, children of all ages will benefit from sensory play. Uh, so beyond the positive impact that it has on our brain, sensory play is also will aid the development of our other skills such as thinking skills, gross motor skills, fine motor skills as well. It is also a very good stress reliever. So for example, the child is having a hard day, long day at school, or you know, uh, examination is stressing them out. Uh, sensory play activities can be benefit, very beneficial at reducing the stress. I personally love sensory play activities because they are very simple to set up. Okay, all you need is, like I said, the three essentials. You need a good surface, you need uh, containers, as well as the right clothes. Okay, and also it requires the materials that you can easily find at your home. You see, none of these things you need to purposely go and purchase. It's, uh, you know, some, it's some food items that you have lying around your house and uh, some you can just print it out from online as well. Okay, and yes, some sensory play activities uh, can be messy. But with uh, putting in place some simple measures to limit your child's play space, the mess can generally be restricted. Okay? So once again, I uh, am very thankful for all of you who are joining me at this moment that are watching this. And even if you are not watching this at the moment, perhaps you are doing some other chores or you're playing with your kids and you're listening to this. Anytime you feel like you want to look back at my slides or any part of this uh, talk, you can. we will keep this video up. You can always come back and uh, review back whichever that you want to review, okay? And also say if you have any queries, you have any questions regarding sensory play, or if you notice that your child uh, may have some sensory issues that you want to address, okay? You can always reach us at our Bagan Facebook page. You can drop us a private message as well, or uh, then we will try our best to respond to you. And even if you, you prefer phone call, you can always call us up and talk to us. So for our rehabilitation here, we have a comprehensive uh, ex, uh, services whereby other than me, the occupational therapist, we have speech therapists as well, physiotherapists and also clinical psychologists. So it's all in, if you need any assessment, need any treatment, need any advices, we will always be there to 
help you out. Okay? And of course, my pediatric services will include child developmental assessment and therapy, sensory integration, which is, which is basically what we have just talked about, and uh, preschool and school skills assessment and therapy, uh, social skill training, play and leisure therapy, and others. So that is all for my talk today. I am going to pass uh, this message back to my colleague, Rachel. Thank you, Ms. Great Haven. Uh, reach us this information for about the sensory break activity at home. I hope you can pray with your kids together. And thank you everyone for joining us in this talk. Have a good day and see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.